Hello and welcome to The Voice of Life. This is Roger and Cheryl Hutchins. Uh, and we are excited about continuing with a lesson on the, uh, a Jesus-built church. That's the church we want to be a part of, the one that Amen. Jesus has built. And uh, if you remember, just a little review and then we'll pray and make an announcement and uh, continue with Cheryl's teaching on uh, on binding and loosing and so forth. But uh, uh, we, talk, we started talking yesterday about... Uh, how that uh, whenever Jesus asked the disciples, uh, who do you say that I am? He'd already said, who do men say that I am? Uh, and it came down to, to Peter giving an answer and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, uh, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this, but my father, which is in heaven. And uh, so we understand uh, that uh, what he's hearing is revel revelation. It's revealing Christ. And that's what Revelation is all about. It's not. It's revealing Christ. It's revealing the work of God, uh, not the work of man, but the work of God. And um, he's, and Jesus said, "Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church." So we know that the architect of the church is Jesus Christ. Um, and let me read that. Let me read this uh, 19th verse of the 16th chapter of Matthew. Uh, before we pray and then we'll make an announcement and we're going to throw it back to Cheryl uh, so she can finish the lesson she started yesterday. Uh, he says in the ninth, 19th verse, he says, I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He's talking unto Peter and, uh, and Peter has just brought revelation um, and uh, that he knew who Jesus is. Thou art the Christ or thou art the anointed of God, uh, the, the, the Son of God. And whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, uh, excuse me, whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Um, before he said loosed, he said bound. Whatever, whatsoever ye bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So uh, we're going to pick up from right there in just a moment. Uh, excited about that because, uh, let me just say this, uh, if we want to know how he's building the church let's look at how he did build the church the the book of acts and the new testament is filled with the examples uh if i want to um uh if i want to build something i go inspect something that's already been built so we're talking about jesus building the church and we're going to look at the tools he used we're going to look at the uh, architecture that he describes and how he uh, begin to do this. First of all, let me remind you also yesterday we talked about the uh, Greek word for church is ecclesia. It does not mean a building. Uh, when you go, we always say, well, let's get up and go to church. Well, we are the church, so we're, uh, whenever we realize we're members of the, the, the church already, putting your name on a church role doesn't make you a member of the body of Christ. It makes you a member of that assembly that uh, that meets there. But it doesn't make you a member of the ecclesia. What makes you a member of the ecclesia is when you're born again uh, and you've given your, your uh, you bleed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you confess with your mouth. Now you are part of the ecclesia and you uh, have all the rights and benefits of what uh, the church has been given under the church. We will talk more about that in just a moment. Uh, just before we pray, though, let me also announce this is um, uh, this is Wednesday, and uh, on Friday night, August the 23rd, uh, we're going to have a meeting in Lexington, North Carolina. Uh, this meeting is going to be at the Speedy Lord Barbecue Annex. There's an annex right behind Speedy, Speedy Lord Barbecue. And uh, it's at 3664 uh, North Carolina Highway 8 uh, in Lexington, North Carolina. It starts at 7 o'clock, uh, and we hope you can be there. Again, that is in Lexington, North Carolina, 3664 North Carolina Highway 8 in Lexington, North Carolina, Friday, August the 23rd at 7 o'clock. We hope you can be there. Uh, if you need more directions, you can get on my Facebook page. You can go to the event, event page and uh, look at what all's going on there. Now, I hope you've got your uh, your Bibles and your notebooks. 
Uh, if not, as soon as we pray, I want you to get your Bible and your notebook uh, because you're going to want to take some notes on what we're looking at uh, because we want to know our relationship with God is, is for all of us to know our place and who we are in Christ. We're going to talk about these things over these next few lessons. Uh, right now, though, we're going to pray for you and pray that God will touch you wherever your need is. If you need salvation, today is the day of salvation. If you need healing, today is the day for your healing. If you need deliverance in any area, if you need uh, financial relief, I want to ask you to pray with us. Ask and believe. Let your believer uh, engage and let's believe God that he meets your needs abundantly above anything that we could even ask or think. Heavenly Father, we thank you today as we come before you. We know you hear us. We know, God, you are listening because, uh, Father, we are your children. And, Father, I thank you, God. It's your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And, Father, I ask you, Lord, for anybody listening that has not been born again right now, let it be the time that they become born again, that they believe uh, in their heart and confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus. And, Father, I also ask you, uh, God, that in the preaching of the word, you have said these signs shall follow them that believe. I ask you now as we teach and preach the word, God, that you uh, would cause your uh, healing power to go forth and touch those uh, that need healing. God, I thank you, Lord. Uh, that, God, you have anointed us, you have called us to this. And, Father, as we open our mouth, God, I thank you, Lord, that the anointing is released and your word goes into the hearts and minds of the people. And, God, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me read that 19th verse one more time, and then we're going to get show to come back and, and uh, talk some more on uh, what she started talking about yesterday. Uh, after Jesus said, I will build my church, upon this rock I'll build my church, in verse 19 he says, And I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So now from that perspective, uh, Cheryl, we want to continue on the, the uh, lesson that you began to talk about talked about yesterday because this is is very important we need to know uh just a few uh lessons back a few days back uh we we taught on using your authority in the name of jesus so we begin to understand that in jesus name we have the ability and the authority to do some things in the earth that is from a spiritual realm into the earth so take it away all right. <laughs> um, I just want to recap a couple of things. One, one way that we are looking at uh, the keys to the kingdom is the what's called the ascension giftings or the equipping gift, giftings listed in Ephesians 4. Oh, and it says that Jesus set those giftings in the church. I, I want to say this real quickly. Um, the Word of God will interpret the Word of God. If we're going to rightly divide the Word of God, we look at the Word of God. What does it say here, there, and yonder? <laughs> so, um, you know, it's all right to get ideas and things from other people because God reveals yeah. things to us. Just like in the scripture that we're reading, the Father revealed to Peter that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, come in a fleshly body. He was the Son of the Living God. Jesus himself said, the Father told you that. He showed you that. So the Father shows us things, but they will always line up with the Word of God. So one, um, I, I just feel, felt such a connection when I realize this about the giftings being the keys and what I want to say first is that Jesus said to Peter I will give you the keys Amen. to the kingdom and I stated in yesterday's lesson he didn't say I'm, um, I've already done it or um, let me find my note here or I do it now, he said, I will give you. In other words, this is something that's going to come to pass, but not right at this minute. 
Now, the reason I reiterate that is because as far as we know, recorded in the scripture, Peter was the first apostle to go to the Gentiles. So he took the key mm -hmm. that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he went to the Gentiles and unlocked for them this great mystery. He began the process of preaching Amen. Jesus. Um, actually, even before that, on the day of Pentecost, he unlocked it to the different yes, Jewish people that were there. Amen. They said, what is this we see in here? You know, something strange had happened. And that's when Peter got up and really gave his first long sermon. <laughs> but that was an unlocking of the kingdom Amen. of heaven. Now, we did a series on the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We understand that it's located in us. The kingdom of heaven is what's supposed to be going on around us. It's the rule of God in us and through us. So we're talking about unlocking the things of the kingdom of heaven. All right. So... Um, one reason for these giftings that are listed in Ephesians 4 is to explain the Word of God, the will of God, to make it very clear. They are stewards over God's Word. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, um, on the day of Pentecost, Peter received uh, the anointing. The Holy Spirit had come to indwell him at that point. And it gave him a boldness to stand up Amen. and and even be so bold as in his sermon at one point, he said, you crucified this Jesus. You crucified the Christ. You did this. Those were pretty strong statements to the Jewish people. But it was done under the anointing of God. And because of that, they said, what do we need to do? They realized they had done this horrible thing and they needed to do something about this. Um, and speaking about binding and loosing, um, let's look at a couple of examples. First of all, when Peter and John went up to the temple, you remember the story if you're a Bible student at all, they went to go to the synagogue and there was a lame man laying there. We had this in one of our prior lessons too and it was mentioned that Jesus went to that same place and it says that lame man was carried there daily but Jesus never healed him. But at this point the father was ready to do something. So at this point, Peter and John were able to minister to this lame man. And what did Amen. they do? They loosed him. Amen. They loosed him wow. from this infirmity that, had, that he had had since he was born from forever. I mean, he, he never had walked. This was an amazing thing. Um, there's other examples of loosing when... Um, Peter was sent to the house of Cornelius. Cornelius Amen. was a Gentile, but he was a respecter of God. He gave alms to the synagogue. He even helped build the synagogue. And God took notice of that, and he sent Peter down. Um, well, first he gave Cornelius a visitation from an angel and said, go send for Peter, and then Peter went down. But um, when Peter got there, he began to expound on the things of the kingdom of God Amen. and Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And what happened? The Holy Spirit came upon them the same. It says the same way as it did on us at the Amen. day of Pentecost. Same, same way. So that was another loosing. It was bringing the Gentiles out of darkness into the marvelous light of God and loosing them from all of the stuff that they were bound by. And... Um, and thinking about an example of binding whatsoever, it doesn't say whosoever, it says whatsoever you bind on earth. Amen. If you remember, um, there's a part in the book of Acts where Paul was preaching. And this woman kept following him around saying, this, this is uh, 
priest of the Most High God or something similar to that. And she kept saying this over and over. You know, listen to this man. He's come from God, that sort of thing. And it disturbed, it troubled Paul's spirit. And finally, after about the third day, he turned around to the woman and cast the devil out of her. Mm -hmm. Notice he didn't bind up the woman, but he bound up that devil, that demonic spirit and force from allowing her to continue on because it was an agitation. It wasn't from God. And I think Roger mentioned on a prior uh, video that the devil speak the truth a lot of times. <laughs> you know, they'll say, this is a holy man of God. Doesn't mean it's God speaking, though. And it doesn't mean that God's acknowledging that. And actually, all of this, actually she, the, the real, she actually, she was loosed herself. When, yeah, when, she was. When, when Paul bound the devil, it loosed the woman. Loosed the woman, that's right. That's good. So anyhow, these are some of the ways that we can understand what this scripture is talking about. The point of, of all everything, really, is that Jesus Christ be glorified. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, when Peter answered, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is the Son of the living God, not a dead God. Amen. He's the Son of Glory a living God. God who is alive right now Glory today, who you, still Father. has real genuine power and authority. And He works through the church for that authority to be expressed in the earth. Amen. Back to you, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just getting into that. I thought we would uh, stay there. If you have questions or comments, uh, you know, if you're on Facebook, that's easy. Do it in the comment section. Um, I think there's a way even on YouTube, if you're watching through YouTube, uh, to go in there and make comments. Uh, Twitter, there you can make comments on Twitter. But, uh, but man, this is uh, really uh, uh, an eye-opening thing because, you know, uh, if you're like me and you've been in the church, been around Pentecost very long, you hit those spots where uh, you wanted to bind and it seemed like nothing would bind and wanted to loose and nothing was loosing. And I think mainly those times come when we don't understand what we're doing. You know, the church, uh, you know, we all have had to grow in our experience. We've had to grow in our uh, learning. Uh, the Holy Ghost teaches us, uh, but our mind sometimes, as Paul said, our mind sometimes is unfruitful. Uh, but whenever it begins to come by the Spirit and God begins to open it up to us. See, there's a, there's a flow of the Word uh, that Cheryl's tapped into here and that we are seeing that that's coming to bring alive in us. I, there, there's, oh my, uh, this just adds to why I'm already feeling uh, because I'm already feeling as we go into North Carolina to minister and to other places, I'm already feeling uh, that God is awakening uh, the Christ in us, the anointing of God. Uh, not that He's asleep; He's, he's not asleep. But 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 but, but what said that, that, that calling in us sometimes gets dormant. We get lazy. We get uh, and you know, sorry if that offends you, but we all get lazy sometimes. Uh, but we we don't we, with the things of God. Be not weary in well doing. In other words, whenever God's given you a, a, an assignment. Uh, giving you something. Uh, by the way, I just want to remind everybody, I, uh, we, we're going into Lexington. We just got through in Cedartown, Georgia. Uh, and if you have a, a, a group or a, of people or you have a, a place where you would like for us to come and share the Word of God, we are available. Uh, I hesitate to give my telephone number on YouTube because then I get all kinds of uh, different uh, on YouTube and, and but it is on YouTube by the way if you go to the YouTube and you scroll down in the information not the telephone number but the email address uh, and and all that the phone number may be there too I'm not sure but but anyhow uh, you can message us you can let us know we'll contact you back uh, but we are available uh, if, if you have a group if it's a home group if it's a church group if it's uh, if, if we can come in like we're coming into uh, uh, into some of these other places where we rent an auditorium and we gather the people but uh, let us know you want us there and then we will uh, we'll come so uh, I, I can give you my mailing address it's Roger 
Hutchins Ministries, P.O. Box 1007, Cedartown, Georgia. That's P.O. Box 1007, Cedartown. That's C-E-D-A-R-T-O-W-N, Georgia, 30125. And uh, we'll be glad to come because uh, God's, God's doing something in the earth today. And, uh, you know, he's, he, we, we've kind of got past some of the, uh, some of the, the stuff that, um, that was uh, kind of bringing us to Christ. But now it's time for us to grow into another level, another place in Christ. Just got a call before we did this uh, program with another invitation uh, uh, to go to another country. And, uh, you know, I'm, we're working on that. Hope that it, uh, we can do it. Uh, but we will see what the Lord says. I felt a witness and felt like God uh, wants us to do it. So uh, one thing you can do to be a part of that, if God deals with you to be partners with us uh, in, in prayerfully and financially and other ways, uh, you can do that. So uh, just felt led to, to take a, just a minute and talk about that. Uh, anything else before we move on to the next section? Well, I just, I really don't remember if I said this, but the the keys of the kingdom are given for us to be good stewards over you know we don't do it so much in america but back in bible days um over the household they had a steward and that steward would be given a key to everything all the storehouses yeah, amen. everything and he was in charge of how much to give out when not to give out when to lock the door and when to unlock it so um, especially for those who know they are called to the gifting ministries of apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, all those things. That is a very high calling and a very big responsibility. It's not to be taken lightly. It's not to boast about I'm a great apostle or I'm a big pastor. No. This is a very big responsibility because it then places on our shoulders, the government shall be upon his shoulders, <laughs> and Amen. it's for us to make sure that we're giving the keys to the kingdom that loosens people, that gets rid of the things that bind people up. The whole point is for us to come into life. If you look at the words living and alive and life, they're all over the, the scripture, especially the New Testament. We just talked about son of the living God. That word means life in its fullest, to enjoy life in its fullest, fully alive. So that's the, that's the purpose. Um, of the gifting ministries that's the purpose of having keys to open the kingdom of heaven so people can come in and enjoy this blessed life amen i mean that's exciting Cheryl, because you know many of us i've been through times whenever i felt like something was just blocked up uh in in just daily life and i felt like it's blocked up in ministry but uh, i'm gonna tell you as god begins to lead us into this understanding of, of what we're binding and loosing we're 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 loosing um you know let, let me just share this it's, and this is exciting to me too because just as you talked about cornelius's house right. and how that peter uh peter was was called by, by cornelius and already had a vision before that uh that kind of loosened him from some of his religious uh binding up uh and uh uh, whenever he went into Cornelius' house, he unlocked the ability for Holy Spirit to fill uh, them with the Holy Ghost to uh, do works uh, in them that was only happening in the, the Jewish community before that. So um, the reason that's exciting to me is God's sending us into the nations of the world. We go to Thailand and we, we teach, we we are part of a, a bigger picture there of the school and we, we teach we help to train and through that god's activating and loosing uh an anointing to go into the nations uh, uh there's a, uh, an apostle there aj 
that is there and uh, I call a name anyhow uh, but but the, uh, there's people there that, that are anointed missionaries are already working there but I'm gonna tell you it's exciting to be a part of that and part of turning that key you know, part of turning that key, I think you said something before we started uh, about turning the key the right way. You know, sometimes I, 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 um, I have a key to my son's house and, and uh, sometimes I have to, when he's out of town or something, I go by there and help uh, do something I have to enter the house. And sometimes I can't, uh, if I try to turn the key the wrong way, it, it ain't going to work. And I go to the back door and go in there. And, but I finally learned how to turn the key the right way. And, uh, you know, that's exciting that, that we, we learn how, as we go, uh, to use the key. You know, you think, well, what is it to use the key? Well, there's a whole lot uh, to using the key if you, uh, if you don't understand uh, how to use it, if you don't understand how, which way it turns or whatever. I know this seems, this may seem a little bit, but see, God's teaching us to use those keys that empower us to bind those things that need to be bound and loose those things that need to be loosed. And like Cheryl's already said, God gives that wisdom, that gifting, if you will, uh, to those ministries, those what we call ascension gifts ministries. Some people call them five-fold ministries, uh, but apostle, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, which we'll, we'll visit again before we get through uh, with this. Uh, series. We're, we're about to run out of time. Uh, anything real quick you want to... Well, I just wanted to say that it does say keys plural, and I have, <laughs> I have watched Roger sometimes when we're at one of the children's houses, and he's got this gigantic key ring, and so he's fumbling through the keys <laughs> trying to figure the right one. So it's important for us to understand these things so we know the right key to use in the right door at the right time in the right place. And we can do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we can. Don't forget, Friday, August 23rd, uh, 2019 at 7 p.m., Lexington, North Carolina, 366 North Carolina Highway 8 in Lexington, North Carolina. Come, be ready, be expecting. Uh, we will be believing God with you and for you It'd be good to see you actually uh, sh shake hands with you or, or, or hug your neck, whichever one is appropriate to you. But uh, anyhow, God is uh, doing great things. God, there's something I, I feel a stir in my spirit for what God's doing in this time and in this day. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that, that we bind up the very powers of the enemy that would try to uh, to hold back and, and try to cause anybody that listens uh, to these videos that watches these videos not to hear. God, we speak to their ears. God, let there be uh, let there be ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we uh, that, that we loose, God, the, the ability to prosper. We loose, Father, the ability to, to enjoy peace and joy and, and happiness and righteousness uh, in the Holy Ghost, Father. We thank you, Lord, that the kingdom of God is loosed unto your people, and God, we glorify you for what you're doing in us and through us, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to come back, and we're going to, going to continue with Ephesians 2. Uh, so if you want to be ready, uh, then uh, God bless you. Just make a, make a point. Keep your Bible and your notebook cl close so you can be a part of it. Uh, we love you, and God bless you. See you next time.